Hello, everyone. I'm George Zagarek. I'm the president and CEO of Waterfront Toronto. Uh, before I uh, go on with regards to some of the background and examples of partnerships, I want to give you a little more background to my life before uh, being CEO of Waterfront Toronto. I've actually um, recently joined Waterfront Toronto, but I spent 35 years in public service, 33 years with the provincial government, two years with the federal government. In those 33 years, I was deputy minister for 11, worked as a deputy in five different portfolios, and worked over that 11-year career, or 33-year career, in 11 different ministries. Uh, so most of those years were leading transformation, and transformation, quite frankly, required partnerships. So uh, let me share, I should also acknowledge, I am uh, a Carleton alumni, so to acknowledge that, uh, since they sponsored today. So let me share three themes that I'd like to touch on tonight and with my hope that I can do this in less than seven minutes. The three themes are change, adaptation, and perseverance. So what can I say about change? Well, first, that we're seeing more and more change occurring more rapidly. Technology has changed how we see the world, how we communicate, and how we engage. So how young people engage with not-for-profits is a good example. Young people appear to be donating less, at least in terms of dollars, and that can't be surprising as they're struggling with um, housing affordability and permanent employment. When they do give, <coughs> sorry, when they do give, they give of their time, and, they, and when they can afford to give, they actually give online. So when we are looking at uh, the experience that we're going to confront as we look at partnerships in the future, we need to understand the context. And part of that context is we're seeing a growing divide between rich and poor. We continue to see philanthropy among the wealthy, but we see a growing list of charities and causes. We see more and more governments running on tax cuts, and yet we see a growing demand for social services and infrastructure. We see corporate donations that we uh, see, and we're seeing more naming rights associated with those corporations. We see people and corporations who want to be identified with a cause. So what do we do about change? Well, we have to adapt. If the world is changing around us, we have to find a way to change. When I ran portfolios in health and education, we had to look at how can we change the growth curve in those areas. They're eating up more and more of the dollars and not leaving uh, as many dollars for other good causes. Lowering costs was part of the solution, but finding partners was a bigger part of that solution. That includes not-for-profits, other levels of government, private enterprise, but to get those partners we needed two things. A vision, and in particular a vision that was shared, and shared ownership. It's hard to get someone to help fund an initiative if they're not clear on the purpose and you can't get them to share ownership of the solution if they don't actually understand how they fit into that role. It's appropriate that uh, Inspire as a national sponsor when I was Deputy Minister of Education we funded uh, Roberta Jamison and Inspire for the right causes, the ability to engage, but more importantly they showed results. And nobody's going to partner and offer up money if you cannot describe the results that you are going to bring forward. So Waterfront Toronto, I'm going to touch on that now, uh, historically has relied on two large funding envelopes over the past 20 years. The first was a funding agreement by the three levels of government of a $1.5 billion amount to establish the agency and to revitalize the Toronto waterfront. This has led to affordable and market housing, uh, it's led to parks, public realm, infrastructure, flood protection, and transit. We have survived off of the sale of those properties. Our second large funding envelope came recently, and that was $1.2 billion for, from our three levels of government again for flood protection and our Portland site. This project was envisioned back when the agency actually was established back in 2001 and with the commission actually earlier than that, but the board had to make tough decisions with regards to limited funding. And part of that was to phase in uh, the flood protection activities starting further north with Corktown Common and recognizing they couldn't do everything at the same time. That's one of the challenges. We, have, we were inspired to resolve all types of issues, 
but we get challenged to do three things and get them done as opposed to 50 things that we get half done. So we need to concentrate, we need to prioritize as we move forward. And that's what our partners are gonna be looking for, is what can you show in terms of results over the next couple of years. So what I'd like to uh, also acknowledge is that one of the core values that Waterfront Toronto has is that we carry over the past 20 years in engagement and meaningful consultation with the public. We have great relationships with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and that's important as we move forward on these lands. Our reputation has helped with donations from projects like Bentway, uh, from Judy and Will Matthews, which provided a generous donation. And I'm gonna show a couple of slides here. To get to the waterfront in the winter and to get skating, uh, a skating track under the elevated highway. We recently released our five-year uh, vision for four priority projects. I'm gonna to touch on them really quickly. One is we want to see a continuous waterfront promenade stretching across the shoreline, physically connecting waterfront spaces to each other and everyone to those spaces. We see a landmark institution like the Sydney Opera House as a visual ambassador to Toronto's waterfront recognized across the world like our CN Tower is today. We see a revamped ferry terminal that accommodates growing demand, uh, welcoming tourists and Toronto families to the islands and other waterfront destinations. And when we finish creating the new river and island on the Portlands, we see a, destina a destination playground that generations of children in Toronto will grow up cherishing and people all over the province, country, and actually the world will, will visit. And as we see these projects move forward, we recognize we are not going to live just on government funding to do that. I'm going to just talk about perseverance really quickly. Perseverance is really important because you're not going to be able to do this easily. We need to build partnerships. We need to sustain that. Uh, I'm going to give two quick examples before I run out of time, and that'll be in a few minutes. Um, the, when I was with the Ontario Public Service, one of the things we tried to do is I engaged in charities. So United Way was one of the charities. We started the first year. We started late. We finished uh, with uh, five teams. Uh, sorry, five uh, sheets, ten teams, and we thought, okay, we started late. The following year. We actually started earlier, but we only had eight teams the following year, right? So we thought, okay, we're defeated in this. What we did is we didn't give up. We actually looked at what, what else can we do? And what we looked at was, okay, we did it on a Friday night after a long week of work. So we got to change the date, moved it to a Saturday. We actually moved to open it up beyond one ministry to multiple ministries. That resulted in this picture. Uh, we had 24 teams for the next few years. We uh, generated tons of results, thousands of dollars for the United Way. And the lesson here is you can't give up, you need to persevere. And that was the same story for Waterfront Toronto, for the people that know the history. This was out of a failed Olympic bid back in 2008. We did not give up. The three partners said, look, the vision is still there. We need to pursue on the vision. So uh, they had the courage to move forward, and people uh, like Bob Fung and uh, John Campbell helped deliver the beautiful uh, waterfront we have. I'm going to just conclude. My last statement would be, if we, uh, in conclusion, I say embrace change, learn to adapt, and persevere, and you will be rewarded with success. Thank you.